Hot oil is to be cooled by water in a two shell and 12 tube heat exchanger. So the tubes are thin walled and are made of copper with an internal diameter of 1.8 centimeters. Sentences already. You know, notice that they're giving you C sub P already. So no doubts about what that is. It's two shells and 12 tubes, and the tubes have an internal diameter of 1.8, so the radius of the tube is 0.9 centimeters, right? So that's 9 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. The length of each tube, mind you guys for this word, is 3 meters. Okay, so if we want to find the uh, surface area, and we do, what we need to do is surface area of one tube will be 2 pi r times l. But we have 12 of those, so we have to multiply this by 12. Yeah, so that will be 12 times 2 pi times 9 to the minus 3 times 3 meters, which is approximately 2 meters squared. Um, the overall heat transfer coefficient, so is this H or is it U? Yeah. Good. So the overall heat transfer coefficient is 340 and water flows through the tubes at a rate of 0.1 and the oil through the show at a rate of 0.2. The water and the oil enter at temperatures of 18 and 160 respectively. Determine the rate of heat transfer in the heat exchange and the outlet temperature. So three three things for us to determine. The Q, right, the rate of heat being exchanged, the outlet temperature of the hot, so hot out, and the cold out. So three things for us to find this problem. Cool, what do we have here? What is this graph? Well, this graph is showing us a shell um, tube heat exchanger. It's for shells with four, 8, 12, or any multiple of 4 tubes. In our case, we have 12, so this is an appropriate graph. We have NTU on the bottom here, so x-axis is NTU. Effectiveness on the y-axis, and we have these blue lines, which are just a ratio between the two Cs, the minimum and the maximum. Okay, let's do it one at a time. What are we looking for here is Q and out, out temp, uh, outlet temperatures. So let's first draw the things that we have here. It's a counterflow heat exchanger. Not that it matters much when we're doing NTU, but let's just keep it consistent. Um, it enters at 18. What is it? Yeah, it enters at 18 and at 160 respectively. So the cold one enters at 18 Celsius and the hot one enters at 160. Off the bat, okay, we, before I do anything else, you can see the delta T max is already given, right? Delta T max is 160 minus 18. Okay? There's no possible delta T that's greater than this because the output of the cold is going to be something smaller, uh, greater than 18, and the output of the hot is going to be something smaller than 160. Um, what else? What else? What else can we determine here? We're going to keep doing our um, our drawings. We're going to put our CPs in our mass flow rates, okay? So for oil over here, oops, the mass flow rate of oil, oh no, this is water, of water and the mass flow rate of oil. So the mass flow rate of water is 0 0.2, 0 0.1, per second, of oil is 0 0.2 kilograms per second. What about CPs? CP, C sub P's, C sub P's of water at 4180 and of oil is 2200, 2200, sorry. Joules per kilograms Kelvin on both instances. Okay, so note there's a method to what I'm doing. I'm actually putting everything in the same line that corresponds to the thing. Okay, it's not, I'm doing it on purpose because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the mass flow rate and the CP and I'm going to get the Big C's here. All right, so I'm just multiplying 
those two guys there. Uh, easy multiplications, right? Don't need even need a calculator. And then two times that, it's going to be 440. Uh, kilograms go away, so we're going to be left with watts per Kelvin, or if you wish, joules per Kelvin seconds. And this is the point in which we determine which one is the max and which one is the min. It's as simple as that, okay? Which one is greater? Well, this one is greater, so this one, therefore, is max. This one is smaller, so this, one, therefore, is min. It's as simple as that, okay? What do we need to be able to find Q? Well, what's our, what's our game plan now that we lay down all this information? Um, the NTU is surface area overall heat transfer coefficient in C min, so that doesn't really help me. This guy is just a ratio between the two. But this guy we know is a ratio between the actual energy being exchanged and the maximum one. So I can use that to my advantage, right? Check out the idea. If the effectiveness is Q actual over Q max, then my Q actual equals the effectiveness times Q max. So if I can find my uh, Q max and my effectiveness, I can find Q actual. With Q actual, I can find the outlet temperatures, right? T cold out and T hot out. So our game plan is to find what is this fella and what is this fella. Okay. Q max is pretty straightforward. That will be the C minimum times the maximum delta T. We have all that information already. C minimum is for 418. Uh, wrong unit, seconds. And delta T max is 100. that. The maximum exchanger is the Watts, right? What about how we're going to find a right? Which is the area, which is coefficient was given to be meter squared here. Kelvin. Kelvin, Kelvin. Okay, good, good to go. And the last zero is uh, by the way, just so you know. I know we said one task. So we have four hundred and four. I'm going to use this condition to grab effectiveness off the. That would be five. So I want to be one second. So it'll be somewhere before it's like around here, probably. And my C is very close to my because my ratio is very close to one to here. So you need. So if this is 60, and the maximum I can get is a 59, my actual is going to be 30. Right? It relates to because what because the energy that I could get is 35, 6, 13.6, 13 13 watts, 13 so my Q So that's what With this one, we could have started finding this guy and then found, or we could have started this one to get it. Now we have, again, different ways of doing this. We can solve it different ways. Um, Q actual, which equals hot, dot, dot, dot. So we can do one at a time. It's really up to you. Um, what I'm going to do is, so there's different ways you can, you can do uh, QA. If you want to remember, in this case, what I did was six, six times e delta T max equals hot. So that means that uh, six times 160 minus that the 440 equals 440 times 160 minus therefore a hot it's like 79.06 or something like that. So we can do exact same thing. Let's change colors so it's not. Confusing, so this is let's just put this here for so for cold, it's exactly the same idea. Right? Six times but that's a cool check out what's going to happen for 18 or 18 uh, T cold out minus 18. I have to go away, so our math is actually simpler. 
T equal to 103.2 for the output of the code, and this is the answer for the output of the hunt. Uh, heaps of different ways you could solve that. It's all the same thing, really, but you know, when you're doing it, sometimes you get confused on what you're doing.